All right, welcome to Saturday nights at the house. Glad you guys are here. How are you guys doing tonight? Awesome. I want to invite you guys to stand, and we're going to worship. We just thank you for tonight, God. Thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word, God. We just give you all the praise and all the glory. You are good, you are good, and your spirit lives in me. You are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, 
You are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope. You are hope. You have covered all my sin.
Good, huh? You have fun with that, Mr. Matthew? It was good, wasn't it? You know, we're created by God in his image. We're an eternal spirit when we're conceived. We have a body, which is our earth suit. Our friend Keely took hers off the other day and moved home. Darn it have words with that woman when I get up there. And then we have our soul, which is our, our will, our mind, our emotion, that part of us that makes choices and decisions. And when we're praising God and we say, praise the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, it's we're making a decision with our mind, with our will, with our getting our emotions into it. We're thinking about it. We're putting it out of our mouth. We're using our hands to bless. We're using our earth suit. We're telling ourselves how it is. The circumstances may be telling you how it is, but you got to tell it how it is. You got to look at the enemy and say, that's all you got? Because I got him. And he's on the inside. And my mind, my will, and emotion will get a hold of that. And I am going to raise up. And I am going to tell the mountain to be removed. And it has to go. So we got another song, and I tell you, I don't care what's been said to you this week. I don't care what came in the mailbox. I don't care what came over the telephone. I don't care what came over Facebook. Because what the Word of God says is that we are overcomers because He is. Good news, little children. I have overcome the world. That means we have too. We are not homeless, jobless, or sick. We are children of the Most High God. We got keys to the Escalade. Our mansion's big. And it's got the right color paint.
presence tonight, God. God, I thank you that we've been able to let go 
and just spend time with you, Father, and experience you, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, God. God, thank you that your, your love, God, is so rich toward us, God. Thank you that you're so good to us, God. We just give you the praise and the glory, Father. Thank you so much, God. Hallelujah. So good, God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you tonight, God, and give you all the praise and glory. And everybody said amen. 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 All right. Give somebody a high five next year. Tell them a little good in the house tonight. Bye-bye. Right on. Okay. Hey, before you're seated, stand up one more time, all right? I want to do something different. We did this out in Bingen a couple weeks ago, and it was a lot of fun. You just high-five somebody, right? I want you to find someone else and pretend like it's a long-lost friend you haven't seen in two years. Now go greet them. Go for it. (laughs) All right. All right, all right. Hey, now that you've done that, find someone else and greet them like it's a lost loved one that you haven't seen in 20 years. Go! (laughs) Come on, do it. (laughs) All right. (laughs) <laughs> right on. Do you feel welcome now? Good. All right. Go ahead, Karen. All right. Welcome to the house. <laughs> we are so glad you are here. If you are new tonight, there's a welcome home card on your tables. Just grab that, fill it out, keep it at the table, and we'll collect them uh, at the end of service. And um, There's also programs on your table. Have you found them already? If you found them, grab them, wave them. No? There's only one person? Okay, there we go. So you can see information that's happening throughout the week and month, as well as notes to follow along with the sermon message. You want to do that because it is good. Also, if you miss anything tonight or you're curious about other stuff going on, you can always check online our website. Who knows it? HouseNorthwest.com. And speaking of, we have not said hello to our live stream online community in a while, so let's say hi. Hello, friends. We're so glad you're watching and tuning in. Okay, so things happening at the house. We have our Bible study, men and women. Do we have a... Oh, my gosh. Sorry to interrupt. We just have... Just got a little announcement. This is really important, though, you guys. So that's why we wanted to get your attention. I hope we have it. If not, I don't know what's going to work. Um... On your tables are chili cook-off sign-up sheets. We want to have a chili cook-off, not a open a bunch of cans or four melt chili off. Right. Right. So we need you to sign up. If you can make any form of chili, you know, ground beef and tomatoes, sign up. (coughs) It's two weeks out, right? Yeah, two weeks out. We'll be one service again. It's going to be awesome because nobody wants to eat first service leftovers, right? So we're going back to one service. Um, We'll be providing the condiments and dessert, um, prizes, gas cards, which is kind of ironic because chili and gas, that's pretty funny. Um, (coughs) What we do do. Um, And pinata for the kids, which is pretty awesome. So here's your microphone back. Thank you. All right. So everybody got that. It's a 6 p.m. service, June 28th, chili cook-off. All right. That was a surprise to me. I had no idea that was happening. All right, also coming up is Loads of Love. It's our ministry to our neighbors, paying for their laundry. If you haven't um, hooked up with Jeff and Jennifer Withers, um, they do an amazing job loving on our community. There are also jars in the middle of your table. If you haven't noticed them before, take a look now. Empty out your pockets, any change you have, or dollar bills, 5, 10, 20, and up. 
And go ahead and just put the, that money in there, and it'll bless people in more ways than you know. So, um, and then also men's breakfast. Do we have any men in the house? All right. Also on June 28th, that's two weeks, two Saturdays from now, uh, the men are all meeting together in the morning, 9 a.m. here. It does cost five bucks. Um, there's going to be a guest speaker. It's going to be amazing. Um, so men, bring your sons, right? David Reagan. Well, there's going to be somebody speaking, so you want to show up still. <laughs> All right, tune back in for that. So with that, <laughs> here, <laughs> here at the house, uh, we, don't, we don't take an offering, but we do give you the opportunity to partner with us. So we consider it a partnership with giving and offering, um, not just with the house, but also with God. So um, there's a black box over here, if you haven't noticed, candles uh, nicely lit there. You can go ahead and put your money in there. There are envelopes on your table. You can put cash or write checks and fill all that information out. If you're watching online, you can click the online giving button and donate and give that way. And then we also want to encourage you to keep giving to the mission and those faith pledges. Um, you will be blessed for it. And then tonight we have the amazing um, Mikey Umberzai. He's going to share a little bit more. Scoot up for him. Thank you, Karen. What? Aaron. Oh, my word. Wasn't worship awesome? Oh, I can feel, I can still feel it. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so um, good news. As many of you know, uh, since December 2012, I um, graduated from WSU and have uh, been, I, I mean, temp agencies, I don't know if you can call that employment, but it's work and it pays the bills. And uh, praise God for Northwest Staffing and other temp agencies that uh, help put food on the table. Um, but, you know, uh, it's been, a, felt like a long slog. And um, all along the way, though, Emily and I have just been so blessed by God, um, just immensely. Um, and we've been given so many opportunities to give and be generous. Uh, to other people um, all along the way, even when financially it didn't make sense to do it, um, you know, just following what God says and listening, and when he says do something, you do it. And uh, Luke 6, 38 um, says, Give, and it will be given to you, good branch, or pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your uh, bosom, and for with the, with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Um, all throughout that year and a half, Emily and I have just continued to give um, and give and give. And, and, you know, God God knows, and he always takes care of us. And uh, we prayed a couple weeks ago, and I was with some people in both services. And, you know, I prayed that I would have a drastic increase in, uh, in my income. And uh, I knew it was my week. I just knew it. I didn't have any reason. I just, I just knew something was going to give that week. Um, especially when you've just, you know, applied to hundreds and hundreds of jobs and just been turned away even when they contact you back and say, oh, cool, and then they say, never mind, close the door. So <laughs> um, Monday, Memorial Day, I, uh, I had, well, the weekend before that, I heard about this job position opening through someone I knew. So I text, uh, text that person Memorial Day. He didn't text me back until Tuesday. Uh, morning at 7.30 a.m. when I was out spraying poison oak at Lacamas Lake because um, I was killing weeds for a while. It was fun. <laughs> and uh, he said, or he, he told me about the job or asked me if I, I was interested. I didn't really know what I was getting into. I said, sure, you know. Um, and so then we set up an interview on Thursday, and I thought, well, you know, whatever. This is, you know, just preliminary. We've gone through this. I've gone through this. But um, I just went in, and I, I was like, Holy Spirit, guy, direct me on this interview, and I know that you'll bring me through this. And uh, sure enough, I got there, and I sat down, and I had two interviewers. Um, one was somebody I knew, and the other one was somebody I didn't know. Um, and the guy that I didn't know sat down. He was nice for about the first two minutes, and then the questions started coming. And uh, the person who I did know didn't know these questions were coming, and you could see him tense up across the desk. <laughs> um and, you know, I just, the Holy Spirit guided and directed me. I was about to, I would be about to answer a question, and then it was like, no, change this word. And it was just really cool. And uh, then five minutes into that, 
they looked at me and said, well, are you okay with starting temp to hire? And yes. <laughs> and sure enough, uh, it's been a huge uh, raise for Emily and me in, in finances, and uh, it's a great opportunity. And, you know, God knew, and he prepared this for me. And he does the same for you because he loves you. It's all from giving, being faithful, and being patient. Seed time and harvest, right? Sometimes it takes a little while for the harvest to come in. All right. Father God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you love us, you take care of us, um, and your promises are true. They are yes and amen, all, each and every one of them for all of us. Uh, you do not show favoritism, God. You do not let your servants suffer shame. You love them. You always take care of us. You take care of your children because you love them. Um, and we thank you, Lord, that as we tap in to those, into your power, God, in giving and in love and in everything, God, that you are quick to give back in all those areas. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <laughs> Bethlehem and Camera, why don't you come on up here? Isn't this cool? You get, you get presents in both yeah. services. Benefit of two. Right. These are um, two of our graduates here today. Give them a big hand. They are also uh, are a big part of our Love 360 internship. <laughs> and they're both really tired because they've been up all night <laughs> at a graduation party. How are you doing? Do you know what day it is? Do you know no. what time it is? No. no, you got like two hours of sleep last night. You're doing great. Anyway, there's another present for you. There's yeah. another present for you because we love you and we're so proud of you. And, you know, when, when people graduate from high school, it's kind of a weird feeling sometimes because, you know, it's like your whole life was planned for you and now it's not anymore. But here's the <laughs> truth. It is. Here's the truth. Still God's is. got a great plan. That's right. A great plan for That's both right. of you. All right. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank, thank you, you Lord. for Cami. Thank you for Bethlehem. Thank you, God, that they have just an amazing destiny in yes, you. Yes, Lord. I thank you, God, that all their steps are ordered by you, and I thank you that this is going to be just the beginning as they are a catalyst for their generation to yes, bring Lord. people to Jesus. Yes. We thank you for thank them. You we Lord. thank you also for David. Yes, and God, God, what a leader he is. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Give you. him a big hand. Love you, Bill. Hang around, Val. So, okay, on Facebook, I had promised everybody that I had a big announcement, all right? And a lot of people had, like, some speculating, you know, on what was going to happen. And okay, so, can we talk about this for a minute? No, just stop for a second. Um, I want to announce that Val is expecting. Wait, 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 wait. She's expecting God to do something great in our church. And so, yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Were you doing something behind me? No. Yes. <laughs> I've got so many things I could say, but I'm not going Why to. Why don't you Just keep moving ahead, Mike. Ahead. John Cutshaw, you're way too close to me, and you're just, your vibe is just <laughs> pouncing off. I mean, we go to men's Bible study, and you just pull it out of me. I just, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, blame John. I'm going to. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so we do have a big announcement for you, and here's the deal. We, as a church, are moving. Yeah. All right? We, okay, uh... Let's make this clear. This okay. building that we are in has been a great blessing, but it was temporary. Yes. Um, we all kind of knew that. And when yes. we moved in, we were like, well, we might buy it. We're going to see, kind of test drive it. Yes. And we test drove it for a while, and we knew that it wasn't the right building for us. And that was to okay purchase. with our, yeah, to purchase. And that was okay with the landlord. He's a, he's a friend of ours, and we love him, and we Absolutely. pray for him. And so um, we have been looking and looking yes. at God's next step for us. And we know that God has a plan at, for the house. And, um, and he kind of revealed that in the last right. couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, what happened was a, um, the pastor <laughs> from People's hot, Church. Man. Yeah, we got hot mics up here. Yeah. <laughs> Turn me down just a wee bit. Yeah. Uh, People's Church, which is just two minutes away, you just go up Andreessen, south on Andreessen, and you go up to Mill Plain, and it's right on the corner of Andreessen and Mill Plain. Great big church, and the pastor there came and invited us to come and help him. And uh, really, when you look at the situation, there's, there's three reasons right off the bat that I have that why we should do this. And the first one be, is, in fact, that he invited us to come. 
and it's kind of a nice thing when you are in a situation like we are as a church when we're renting to have people invite you to come. You know what I mean? Because sometimes if you're just going to a place and you're renting a place, it's not always it's like, well, you're just a renter. But this is different because they really have invited us to come and be a part of what they're doing as well and what God is doing right there on the corner there. So that's the first thing. The second thing is this. We have the opportunity to do something really special, and that is to build the kingdom of God. Uh, Pastor Mulkey has been there for quite a few years, and um, he's 64 years old. And, uh, you know, for myself, I'm 50, but I consider myself a young 50. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, uh, amen, that's right. We like to stay young here at the house. And so, um, anyways, all that to say, the things that they've been doing up there are a little bit outdated, and they need some help. They need some, an injection of life. And, and so the house, that's us. We are an injection of life. That an is injection correct. injection of something. Something, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so um, that's the second thing. So we can go and help build the kingdom of God and help encourage them to uh, get going in a better direction than what they've been going. And then the third thing is this. The Bible tells us to be good stewards of God's finances. And, uh, and so one of the things that you need to know as well is that by moving there, our rent is drastically reduced. And so it's a wonderful thing for us as a church. It's a blessing for them because they need us up there and the finances that we're going to produce there. But uh, also then it opens up doors for us to be able to use some finances in some other areas as well to help continue, again, to build the kingdom of God. So um, I know Val wanted to share a couple things as well with this. I think I think the timing of God, and, and you know our, our landlord is Pastor Glenn Johnson, and he was... Um, out of town and he he and Mike were on the phone together and he told Mike that there was a real good possibility that this building is sold and we are thankful for that. Amen. We are so glad for them that they will get out from underneath this debt. And um, then the second thing is is that um, you know the the pastor came on the very day that Mike talked to Glenn. Right. The very day. What right. what you know what is that? The guy he we didn't know him. He came down here looking for us. Right. And just a little side note, 20 years ago, we were sitting in the pastor's office. It was a different pastor in that building. Same building, yep. 20 years ago this fall, and the pastor looked at us and said, why don't you come down here and start a church? Why don't you plant a church down here? Plant a church down here. We said so, no. Yeah. We know. People <laughs> down there are, down here are crazy. Well, it took us about 10 years to get it figured hey, out. Hey, but, hey, hey, hey. But, no, it's been, it's good. And they've told us that we basically have carte blanche in the building. Right. to do what we want to. So follow Janelle Parker on Pinterest. She's already got the she's the already nursery. got the nursery. The nurse gonna... she walked in the nursery the other day and she went, "Oh, oh, oh." Yeah, there's a lot oh. of things, guys. And we need your help and you know, elbow grease and and creativity, all those good things that we carry that we're able to do. So let's go take the mountain, right? Like Caleb. Go charge the mountain, right? So that's my big announcement for you tonight. August 2nd will be our first service there. I think we'll probably set up a couple weeks before that a open house night where we can go through it and walk through it and show everybody what we're dealing with, and I mean what we the blessing that God has for us, and uh, and then also uh, give us the opportunity you know for you to start dreaming and, and planning as well. Uh, throughout those next two weeks, then after that we'll be hauling stuff, and then that finally that the next Saturday that 26th I think it is of July. Uh, That'll be our last service in this building, and so by that time, we'll be pared down to our bare minimums, and what we're, we're going to do is have everybody bring their pickup trucks and minivans and all those things, and we're going to load up everything. We're going to get one U-Haul. We'll load up everything that we have here and haul it up the hill, all right? And so it's going to be great. And by the way, coming up in August, we've got some special services as well that are geared towards families, and I mean, it's going to be really a lot of fun. A lot of cool things happening as we move into this new building, okay? All right, so let's keep, yeah, praise the Lord, amen. So uh, a little child in church for the first time watched as the ushers passed the offering plates. When they neared the pew where he sat, the youngster piped up so that everyone could hear, don't pay for me, daddy, I'm under five. It's cute, it's just a cute joke. While having their evening dinner together, a little girl looked up at her father and asked, Daddy, you're the boss in our family, right? Father was very pleased to hear it. He competently replied, Yes, my little princess. The girl then continued, That's because Mommy put you in charge, right? 
All right, one more, one more. And again, where is my friend Ryan Cotterlick? Is he gone already? Oh, there you are. Okay, John, you're going to love this joke, okay? After getting his driver's license, the young man visited home during vacation and asked his dad for the family car. His dad agreed, but put forward three conditions. Good grades, a neat room, and a decent haircut. <laughs> After several months, the young man came home again. He had followed the three things that he had promised to his dad, except for getting his hair cut. When the father saw that his son had disobeyed him, he asked for an explanation. The son said, well, hey, Dad, even Jesus had long hair. His father, not being someone to t t uh, be taken for a ride, smiled and said, yes, son, you're absolutely right. And Jesus, Jesus also walked everywhere he went. <laughs> All right, we're wrapping up a series uh, called Yes Man, and I was going to show video clips, but man, maybe I'll just act it out for you, okay? So, no. No, man. No, man. No, man. No. Oh, you guys know this movie. It's a good movie. But the, the idea of the term yes man is not really about being a yes man and saying yes just to anything or saying yes to a person just so that you can gain favor with that person. Really what it is is saying yes to God, being obedient to what God has for you in your life. And so many cool things happen when we obey God. And we've talked about it for the last couple of weeks. But we had this scripture, 2 John 1, 6, and it says this, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his command. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. <laughs> it's pretty interesting to me. We get the definition of what love is, to be obedient to his commands. And what is his commands? To walk in love. <laughs> it's kind of a, John, you and I, we're the only ones that, it's kind of ironic, you know. Anyways, but walking in love, that's what God has for us. That's, that's the only thing that he has for us to do, walk in love. Matter of fact, the one, you know, uh, religious person came to Jesus one time and said, you know, what are the, what's the greatest commandments? And what did Jesus say? He said just two things, really. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love. That is the greatest command that we can follow is to be obedient to his commands, and that is to love people and to love God with everything that he has. And so we need to say yes to him. And if you're going to be obedient, if you're going to say yes to God, really it's all about love. You got to be a person that loves. There's, no, you know, you just can't, you can't stop loving. And the great thing about it is the Bible tells us in the Book of Romans that the love of God has been shed abroad in the heart of all believers. And so sometimes we don't feel like loving. Come on, don't look at me so spiritual out here. No, Pastor Mike, I always feel like loving my husband or wife. Yeah, no, come on, come on, come on. You know, feelings come and feelings go. We realize that. But when we stay committed to God and to what he has for us, we realize that we have to stay committed to the love that he has for us. And the great thing about this is the moment you say yes to God with the ultimate yes, and that is Jesus be the Lord of my life, he floods you with his presence. And so his love is there and available for us to help and minister to others and to share with others and to receive for ourselves as well. Isn't that good? So the love of God's been shed abroad in our hearts. That's, so, that's such good news, right? And so the first week I talked about this, how you need to learn how to be obedient to God and obedient to his word, which is Jesus, obedient to the Holy Spirit and obedient to our spiritual leaders, right? And as we walk in obedience, good things start to happen in our lives, right? The only time that you wouldn't obey your spiritual leaders and leaders that God places in your heart is or in your life is when they're not walking in love. <laughs> Hello? Right? Come on, this is good teaching. And so, uh, and then last week we talked about why do we disobey? Why do we disobey? And it's always a choice. Disobedience is a choice just like obedience is a choice, Right? And we, we disobey, we choose to disobey because, first of all, we're self-addicted. 
That was a term I came up with a couple weeks ago. I thought it was pretty smart sounding, right? I may write a book someday, self-addicted, and you may write it first, and then I'll have to sue you. No, I would never do that. Because again, that's not love, right? Uh, but it's true. We are so addicted to ourselves, aren't we? Come on, don't, again, don't look so spiritual at me. doesn't work. I know the truth. I read Facebook just like you type it, right? Uh, <laughs> we do things because we want to do them and because we like to do them, right? We're self-addicted. We really spend a lot of time thinking about ourselves, thinking about, you know, the things that we want, things that we, hello? And we miss out on what God wants sometimes, Right? Second reason that we might uh, disobey or choose to disobey is because it might be fun or it might be hard to. He might, um, he might give you something to do that's hard to do, like give <laughs> at church. <laughs> what? God, I thought you were a God of love. <laughs> he is a God of love. He is a God of love. He asks us to do hard things because he loves us. And he wants you to have every blessing that he has for you. He wants you to have every promise given to you. But some of the promises of God are conditional. Hello? We've got to realize that sometimes he'll ask you to do something that's hard because he wants to rise you up to a new position in life, a new promotion in, in spiritual matters or in physical realms as well. Right? Sometimes it's hard. But we choose to disobey sometimes because it is hard, right? Get stuck in a rut. You ever been there? You know what a rut is. It's a grave with both ends kicked out, right? Don't get stuck in that rut. Third thing, third reason why we might choose to disobey is because sin is fun, right? I talked about some of my shortcomings when I was much younger, right? Sin is fun for a season, But then seasons change, don't they? Come on. And it's not as much fun anymore, right? Especially when you know you're not doing something you're, you know, you shouldn't be doing, right? Um, Number four, the fourth reason why we may choose to disobey is because we look for for man's approval. And this is so true. We all want to be liked, don't we? My personality type is kind of a dangerous one for, as a a leader, is because my biggest fear is that people won't like me. But I've, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, I've, I've really done well to get over that uh, for the most part, for the most part. Okay. So we choose to disobey sometimes because, again, we're looking for approval. And a uh, great book, Joyce Myers, called Appro- Approval Addiction. If you're one of those types of people that's just stuck trying to please other people, that's a great book for you to read, okay? So that's what we kind of led up to. And tonight, I want to get to the frosting on the cake. Can we do that? Do you like frosting on the cake? See, when I eat cake, I don't eat cake for the cake. I eat cake for the frosting, right? So tonight is frosting. Okay, yay, amen. So I want to talk to you about the benefits of obedience, the benefits of obedience. And I got four things. Uh, when we say yes to God, four things for you tonight that happen to you and for you when you say yes to God, all right? Number one, God takes pleasure in you. God takes pleasure in you. Wouldn't you want God to be happy with you? Come on. I mean, I don't know about you, but it's kind of a, I think, kind of a big thing, right? I mean, we want God to be happy with who we are and what we're doing and pleased with who we are, all those types of things, right? And so the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 5 and following, it says, By an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. (laughs) <laughs> they looked all over and couldn't find it because God had taken him. We know on the basis of a reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. And then verse 6, it says, it's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. Uh, other translation says that he's a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. Is that good? You see, as we seek after God, as we seek to obey him and do the things that he's asking for us to do, 
God rewards us. He takes pleasure in you. And you think about Enoch. What a great story. It's found in the book of Genesis right at the very beginning. He walked with God. Now think about it for a second. This is the Old Testament, the Old Covenant before, you know, before Jesus came along. Before the blood of Jesus covered us, just like we sang that song about the blood of Jesus, so that we can enter boldly into the throne room of God, like the the Hebrews says, right? Because of that blood, we can go right into the presence of God. All of us can. We don't have to be the high priest, you know, that could go in once a year. (laughs) We can go daily, boldly into the throne room of God and talk to him, have fellowship with him, relate to him, and he relates to us, right? This is good news. But Enoch, before any of that was available, walked with God, talked with God, spent time with God. And I'm sure as I thought about it, you know, in the relationship that Enoch and God had together, you think about it, whenever you have a relationship, sometimes there's things that, you know, and when you're talking with somebody, they they say stuff. They maybe even ask you for things or ask you to do stuff, right? Right? It happens in a relationship, right? My sister Char, Rick, can you uh, take the trash out, right? (laughs) I don't know why I said that. (laughs) So bizarre. Sometimes you say that, right? Yes. Most of the time he just sees it and does it, right? You took the trash out today. (laughs) Good work. Happy Father's Day. (laughs) you're not going to live this one down Rick I'm sorry (laughs) anyways the thing is is though you can only imagine that at times that when Enoch and God are walking together and, and God took pleasure in Enoch spending time with him conversing with him relating to him but what was he taking pleasure in It wasn't just the relationship, but also I think there was an obedience factor that was going on in Enoch's life, right? He had faith. He believed in God, and and because he believed in God, he did what he felt like God was telling him to do, right? So you can only imagine there were times when he'd be talking, God would be talking to Enoch, hey, Enoch, I saw when you did that. I saw when you were helping that person. That was really great. I saw when you ministered to that person. I saw when you gave to that person that needed help. Come on. How much more for us today? Where we don't, you know, we walk with God and talk with God through his Holy Spirit. Know that he wants to talk to you, that he's a rewarder of those who earnestly seek after him. He wants to reward you. He wants to bless you. He takes pleasure in you saying yes to the Holy Spirit. I want to throw something out here. I didn't do this in the first service because I didn't, this is different. Um, But we have a single mom here tonight that uh, she is, had a lot of crazy stuff happen in her life. I mean, you couldn't write a book for most of it, right, Megan? No? Yes? Come on, you're awful quiet and you're embarrassed now, but I love you very much. We all love you very, very much. And you know, Megan really is trying. She's really trying to live for God the best she can. And she is hurting. Um, she had a situation happen out of her control. Her ex and, and the father of her three earlier younger children um, came over and just did a bunch of stuff at her apartment and busted up a bunch of stuff. And so she was asked to leave. And so she's been going through the right proper channels, authorities. And um, so they are helping her, and they have got a place for her to move into, and by next Saturday, she's got to move into it, all right? So she needs help moving, number one, and number two, she needs $360. I would imagine that people just with a little bit of cash, everybody just kind of stepping up into the plate, could probably knock that $360 out like that. What do you think? You want to try it? All right, let's try it. All right? Why don't we stand to our feet? It's a free will offering. If 
you'd like to give, her name, her name is Megan Dutcherson. If you want to write a check, you can. Or if you have cash, just walk it right back there. Candace is back there. And just plop it on the table. Let's just see what happens. Let's watch a miracle take place, shall we? Isn't that fun? Now, I'm one of those kind of guys, I don't carry cash with me. And if you don't carry cash, don't feel condemned or anything like that. But watch this happen. Watch this happen. Megan, you can cry now if you want. It's your party. You can cry if you want to. Cry if you want to. Cry. Okay, Candace, count it for me. (laughs) All right, we're counting. Oh, it's still coming in. That's pretty cool. My eyes are getting moist. What is this moisture (laughs) thing? John Cotterlick? Cotterlick, you used to tell me about this experience where your eyes would get misty. Yeah, Withers, yeah, absolutely. There he goes. to. Oh, you're going to put a little in the kitty too? Okay, good. Okay, where are we at now? Okay. Are we over 300? We're over 400? I don't know. We're, so, we're somewhere over. Okay, well, I guess you're going to make it, aren't you? And Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over Megan, her wonderful kids. We just plead the blood of Jesus. Protection. This guy will not have any more, any more ability to harm you guys in any way. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Megan. Right on. Come on. Thank you, everybody. You guys are amazing. You're, you're always amazing. You know, last week, we, um, our youth group needed to raise money. They did their fundraiser for their missions trip, right? Are we close? We're almost there. Did you count that extra 500? Okay, and how close are we now? Good. We need a little more. How much more do you need? $700 more. Okay, well, we're very, very close. And I think you're going to do another fundraiser, right? All right, right on. That's fantastic. But I'm just telling you that there was, they were thousands of dollars short last week, and now they're like within a $700. They were $3,500 short last week for this mission strip. And so, <laughs> amen. Right on. So God is good, right? Yeah. Now, now, think about this, everybody. I just said this. That when we're obedient, God takes pleasure in us. I wouldn't, don't be shocked if some of you have a dream or a vision or even an an audible voice from God speak to you this week. You, You might even sense it in your spirit now and just God going, yeah, right on. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm. Second blessing that comes, or the second thing that happens when we say yes to God is that God's blessings come on us, right? We talked about it in the last couple of weeks about Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know, if you're obedient to God, then all these blessings come upon you. And he talks about all your know, family blessings, financial blessings, spiritual blessings. Amazing stuff, right? I just love it. Galatians chapter 3, verses 9 and following says, So those now who live by faith are blessed along with Abraham. Right on! Seven ten. We're... What did I say? I told you before service, don't worry about it. It's nothing. That's what I kept saying. I said, it's nothing. And she goes, no, it's huge. I said, no, it's nothing. Amen. You going to make it? Now be smart with it, right? Okay, 
Okay, so now those who live by faith are blessed along with Abraham. We live by faith. There is, no, there is no new doctrine. And that means that anyone who tries to live by his own effort, independent of God, is doomed to failure. Scripture backs this up. Utterly cursed is everyone, every person who fails to carry out every detail written in the book of the law. This obvious impossibility of carrying out such a moral program should make it plain that no one can say, sustain a relationship with God that way. The person who lives in right relationship with God does it by embracing what God arranges for him. Doing things for God is the opposite of entering into what God does for you. Habakkuk had it right. The person who believes God is set right by God, and that's the real life. What I'm trying to tell you that about this whole situation is this. To say yes to God is not about doing things that you think God would want you to do. Because you can't do enough to have a right relationship with God. If you try to start doing good things to make yourself feel better about your relationship with God, you actually are putting yourself under a curse. It's really about receiving from God that right relationship. And then, because you're in that re right relationship, it's like, oh, I just love you so much, God. And because I love you so much, here's my life. It's yours. Here's my stuff. It's your stuff. Here's my gifts. They're your gifts. Here's my talents. They're your talents because you gave everything for me. Now I give everything for you. All about love. It's all about love. I mean, you could go and try and raise people from the dead. You can go and try and, you know, see all sorts of miracles take place. But if it isn't based on the love that you have for God, it means nothing. Mm. Church! Nancy, in the first service, Tex was here, and he had his phone on, and it, like right in the middle of service, he had this har he has this Harley engine thing. And it was like, blah, 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 blah. That's his Tex alert. Silly. No, oh, you know, I love it. It was God's timing, I think. Number three, shall we? Should we keep going? Okay. Seriously, I have a party I have to get to, okay? And you're making this take much longer than what it really should, okay. Number three, <laughs> when we say yes to God, God's unfiltered power flows through us. Oh. Isn't that what we live for? That sensation of God's power and presence. And you know, we can't live on for feelings. Let me, let me help you with this, all right? We've got to live by the facts of God's word, first of all, right? The fact of God's word says where two or three are gathered together, he's here in our presence, right? The second thing is this, that we have to have faith in the facts and believing that he's here, right? And then the third thing, our feelings fall in the line, in the proper in line. But if we just come in just seeking a feeling, then you're going to miss out. But I have good news for you. <laughs> if you know the truth and you go after the truth and you believe the truth, you will feel God's presence. You will feel God's presence. The first service I was here, first song, you know, and I was like, yeah, come on, come on, Mike. Come on, God, where are you at? Where? You know, and he was there. It's not like he changed. It was me. But then I just started singing about the presence of God. And you know what? It just happened. It was like this tap just opened up over my head, and I just began to sense the power and the presence of God. And it hasn't stopped the rest of the day. It's been really good. But see, when we say yes to God, his power flows through us. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it says, In alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything that God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. What a great verse, right? But the key there was what? 
the expectancy. As we come into the service expecting God to pour out his spirit in our life, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I've told the story many times about how uh, this one uh, time I was in a church and this uh, the church was in revival, and it was great, amazing. God was just doing amazing things. And there was this one lady. She's in her mid-40s, and she was um, had probably the mental capacity of maybe about a 12-year-old. I love this lady. What a sweetheart. And she, <sighs> Val, Ashar, you know who I'm talking about, right? What a sweetheart. Just a prayer warrior. Just loved Jesus with all of her heart. And again, we were right in the middle of this revival, and she came up to me, and she wanted to speak this. She goes, can I pray for you, Pastor Mike? And I said, sure, you know, and I was stupid. <laughs> and I wasn't thinking about what I just had opened myself up to, you know. And she came up, and she prayed over me, and I was thinking about something else. And, and honestly, I don't remember a thing that she prayed over me. And she walked away. Cindy's her name, yeah. She walked away. And the Lord spoke to me, said, you needed what she had that I had to gi- I gave her to give to you. You needed that. And because you weren't ready to receive it, you don't get it. And I just said, God, I'm so sorry. And I apologized. I just said, God, I'm sorry. I said, from now on, I don't care who it is. It could be the devil himself wanting to come up and bless me spiritually. I'm going to receive it like Jesus is laying his hands on me, like Jesus is speaking that word over me. Now, some of you might go, what a minute, wait a minute. You know what, the the devil, he doesn't, he's stupid, all right? And he only has very few tactics. I bet you God messes him up every once in a while, too. Now, don't make a doctrine of that, but listen to me. What I'm trying to say is, I don't care if the worst sinner in the world wanted to come up and speak a blessing over my life, I'm going to receive it as if Jesus himself was speaking that word over me. Listen to me. God used a donkey once to speak a blessing. Got to get ready. Got to be open. You got to be expecting God to do something amazing. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, okay, son, I forgive you, and you get it anyways. I was like, thank you, God. Colossians chapter 2 Verse 10 says this, when you come to him, that fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over everything. That word fullness in the Greek is an awesome word. It means this, pounding, striking, and cramming. Literally, I just picture when I'm just opening up my heart to the Holy Spirit, that he is just pounding me with his spirit. That he's just cramming me full, you know, it's like, mm, 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 mm. you know what I mean? More than you can ever handle, more than you could ever expect. Because that's the way God is, isn't he? Isn't he a more than enough? More than you can handle? More than you can expect kind of God? Come on. His Holy Spirit is for us every day. And when we come to him and open up our hearts and say, yes, God, I'm yours. My body's yours. My mind is yours. My mouth is yours. My hand, my feet, everything that I have is yours, God. He's going to invade who you are so that you can invade the world with his love, right? Number four, finally, that this is true. When you say yes to God, God's, God's promotion comes for you. In the story of Joseph, a coat of many colors, the book of uh, Genesis, You'll find in Genesis 37 and following all the way to Genesis 50, his story. And he had been given a promise from God. And that promise was that he was going to have this incredible family. And that he was going to do amazing things. And that the rest of his family were going to bow down to him, right? It's a promise that comes from God. And he held on to that promise, didn't he? And through all sorts of situations... He held on to that promise. And because of the promise of God, he was despised by his brothers. Because of the promise of God, he never gave up. Because of the promise of God, he was promoted everywhere he went. And his family was blessed. And the world was saved of starvation. 
Here's what I think. If you were beaten up by your family <laughs> and thrown into prison and, and thrown into slavery, first of all, and then thrown into prison, I think some of you would give up on some of the promises of God. Joseph, he was no wimp, man. Beat up by his brothers, thrown into a well, thrown into slavery. Never gave up on the promise. Thrown into prison. That was a death sentence. And he never gave up. And God promoted him to be second in command. All the way, second in command to Pharaoh. Come on. He never let go of the promise of God. When we say yes to God... There may be difficulties coming. Matter of fact, I'll just guarantee it. All right? The Bible says that if you're going to live for God and really serve him, then there's going to be persecutions that come. Yay! Okay, you're signing up. We've got the um, chili sign up. Right underneath that, we've got the persecution sign up. Who's ready for persecution this week? So just go ahead and sign up for that. There you go. Woohoo! But you know what? When we realize that our life is God's, it doesn't really matter. Matter of fact, the, the disciples, they thought it was cool that they got persecuted. They thought it was great that they got beaten, whipped for the sake of Christ. Because Jesus had gone through that before for them. <laughs> and we could realize, yeah, God, if I'm doing this, I'm doing this for you. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ who lives through me, right? Mm. Got to hang on to the promises of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20. Whatever God has promised gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. In him, that is what we preach and pray, the great amen. God, yes, and our yes together, gloriously evident. God affirms us, making us a sure thing in Christ, putting his yes within us. By his spirit, he has stamped us with his eternal pledge, a sure beginning of what he's destined to complete. You see, when God promises something, he keeps that promise. If he promised that he'll heal you, he's going to keep that promise. If he said he'll bless you financially, he's going to keep that promise. If he said he's going to help you with your relationships and make them strong and healthy, he's going to keep that promise. I'm telling you, God is a good God, and he loves you so much, and he wants you to say yes to him. But not so that you do all sorts of different things, but just that you would say yes to that relationship. Yes to that opening up your heart and your life completely to him so that he envelops everything, and you envelop everything of him, and he envelops everything of you. That's what he's looking for. That's what he's longing for. Just love him and love others and watch amazing things start to take place in your life. Who knows, maybe you'll come to church and somebody will give you 710 bucks. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Go ahead, Emily. Take um, over. Take over. I'm done. So you're talking about saying yes to God. And the audible voice, and my brain just got going. And I've said this to you guys before in the past, and so I know some of you have heard it, but you got to listen to this because this is true. This is good teaching. Um, if, God, if God tells you something that's on your heart, tells you something that's going to happen in your life, you need to believe it. Um, and when I was growing up, I knew I was going to be a mom. I knew it. I knew we were going to have kids. I knew I was going to get married. I knew I was going to have at least two. We'll see. <laughs> about more but I'm telling you I'm not pregnant thank you <laughs> oh am I expecting I'm expecting God to do great things and <laughs> and I'll tell you what five years ago I had a doctor tell me otherwise yeah that's right the doctor told me you're not gonna have kids you have a 10 percent oh. chance of getting pregnant even if you're on medication and I just I I really struggle mm. with that because I knew that God that 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 promise was mine and and I prayed to God about it. And I'm telling you, I heard that audible voice. I heard God tell me the reason why I wasn't pregnant yet. And that 
I needed to forgive my mother before yeah. I became a mother of my own. Yeah. It can happen. I, and I just really felt like somebody needed to hear that tonight. Yeah. So if you're struggling with a promise that, that you believe have got, that God has given you, that God has put on your heart, then you need to step out in faith. And you need to take action with that. Um, and, and God will bless you for it. So, okay. Don't, don't leave. Okay. <laughs> just um, pray over all of us that, that we can. Yeah. It's come on, it's re- as you know, it's hard to let go. It is very hard to let go. Especially um, when people have hurt you and hurt you and hurt you. Yeah, when, when, you, um, when you've grown up in a spot or a situation that um, the life has been really difficult, you know. And I know there's a lot of people in this room mm. that, um, that <laughs> life has been hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's not always been easy and it's not always been perfect. And, you know, we, th- we all think, oh, yeah, but those are my own skeletons, my own closet. And, um, you know, we, we hold on to that because it's ours. We hold on to that because that's what we associate ourselves with. Um, but we, we need to associate ourselves with God. We need to let go of our past and, and let go of those, those things that, that put us down. That doesn't mean we need to forget about it. That doesn't mean we need to ignore it or that it didn't happen. But... Um, there's so much past that. When you step into God and when you step out in faith of what the promises that God has for you, um, just amazing things will happen. So, Lord, I just, I just pray for everyone tonight. I just, um, I just thank you that, um, that you are here, that you're alive, and that we can have that relationship with you. We can, we can hear you and speak to you. And I just, I pray that this week, Lord, you, um, you have visions for people, that you speak yes. to people, you speak in people and through people. Um, and you just give people passion for you, God, and passion for, um, for who you are and the promises that you have. Amen. I just realized something myself, and I know Char knows exactly what I'm thinking and feeling right now because she is my sister. I've struggled all my life with weight issues. Um, And I've always wondered why. And God took me back, showed me a vision while Emily was praying. And during the summers, my parents would drop us off at our grandparents' house. And I just hated it. And it wasn't because my grandparents weren't wonderful. They were wonderful people. But I always felt abandoned by my mom and dad. And I really feel like that's one of the root issues why, or maybe the root issue, why I've struggled with that. And as David Reagan would tell you, you've got to get to the root (laughs) before you can deal with the issue really it to happen and I know for me that that's a big root and many of you are dealing with issues or problems or situations and there's a root behind it there's something deep down inside that's causing you to act react or self-medicate to get the relief from the hurt from the past And I believe that even you coming up and sharing what you shared, that's just, you know, again, that was the root for you. And we all deal with issues. We all have situations that rejection or abandonment or abuse. But the great thing about it is that he loves you. God loves you. And he wants to bring healing. He wants, he wants you to be complete. He wants you to be whole. And we can change our root. You know, I was reading a couple weeks ago in um, Romans, I want to say 10 or 11. <laughs> um, but it talks about being rooted in him and, and yeah. where, you're, where you're planted in, the, in that soil. And we can change our <laughs> root, sure. people. We can change our root. And that's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, right. change the DNA. And um, and I would love to pray for anybody tonight that wants their root changed. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because um, 
let's just open up the front. Yeah. If you want prayer for that, there'll be people up here, leaders up here. I'll be up here. Come up and pray for people. Yeah. So let's stand to our feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's just sing a new song to the Lord right now. Just go ahead. I love you, Lord. I worship you. Stay up here. Where, where did you go? Get back up here. Grab that microphone. We love you, Lord. Oh, we need you, Lord. I need you. I need you like the air I breathe. I need you, Lord. I need you. forsake me. You're always beside me. You always guide me. Thank you, for your promises. you love me, Lord. Oh, thank you for your promises. You love you, Lord. They're true. They are true. You never fail. You never fail. Through it all, through it all, you take our pain, you take it all, God. Yeah. We have life, we have healing in your name. Through it all, through it all, God. You are true, you are true. Your word is life. Your word is life to our souls, God. <laughs> you bring life. You bring life and healing. Father, I just believe even right now as we open up our hearts to you, you're pulling that root, that tap root that's deep down inside that has caused damage, that has caused crooked areas of our life, has caused brokenness, has caused insecurities, has caused pain, has caused sickness, has caused poverty, it's caused so many evil, awful things. I just believe even right now your spirit is pulling those things out of us. And you are filling us with the root of your love. <laughs> you know, if you're believing for something, if you have something on your mind that you, a promise that God has given you, 
and you're not seeing it come to pass. I heard this a couple weeks ago. You need, you need to find somebody that yeah. their promise is happening, that they're yeah. seeing the signs from God. And you need to ca- talk to them. You need to follow them and and, 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 you. and be in that <laughs> be in be in that moment and, and um and just soak that up. Because it's for you. It's it's you know, God doesn't play favor. Yes, that's right. <laughs> if you feel like you've been abandoned in your life, just come up to the front here. I want to pray with you. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't mean your parents were bad parents or anything like that, but just maybe if you felt abandoned, just come on up, and I want to pray with you. It's all you, man. And every broken heart And every broken heart in its place, oh God As you breathe into us, oh God of our hearts you hear, oh God. Yes, you restore our hearts, oh God. Yes, you hear our hearts, oh Lord. Yes, yes oh God. Yes, oh Lord. Yes, oh God. Yes, oh God.
We just thank you for tonight, Father. We thank you for your word. We just love you, God. Invading all my weakness, you wrap me up in grace. The worst of me says, see if I'm the best of you. God, we love you and give the glory, and thank you for everything you've done tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, if you got to go, we love you. And if you can stay and help us break down, we'd appreciate it.